to get started, what you're looking at here is Apex 7, which most of you have probably seen at least a few times. Um, so I'm going to just kind of go over what all the buttons are in the panels and kind of just give you a walkthrough of where everything is. Um, so right now, when you launch the program, it's going to launch with the home tab highlighted, which has all your, you know, typical cut, copy, paste, select functions. Um, these, these are more commonly used features up here. So this is kind of why it's under the home tab. Um, there are other tabs that I won't get into too much detail on, but the view tab obviously gives you options for different views and things you see. So you can like turn the grid on or off, things like that are, are done under here. And a lot of the things I'm going to show you, there's actually multiple ways to do it. Um, for example, grid on off, you could turn the grid on off down here or up here, um, filter here or here. So a lot of these things are kind of put in for previous users are used to seeing it here versus we've put it another place that we think is more convenient and other users do. Um, tools tab, this is where you, you'll go to get to your settings if you wanna configure any specific settings or anything like that. Uh, then we have the photometrics module, which allows you to import an image, set the scale and trace it. This is a very convenient uh, feature here. Um, survey tab allows you to draw land using legal descriptions. Um, it's kind of a niche thing, but if you need it, you need it, and it's very important to you. Um, under the Help tab, this is where you can come to activate modules, deactivate licenses. So if you're moving a license from one computer to another, um, you can easily just come in, deactivate it off one, install and register on the other without having to call us. Um, this is also where you can come and go to About and see what version you're on and things like that as well. Uh, and get updates. You can get updates through here as well. Um, but the main tab we'll focus on today will be the home tab. Um, now, going down the left side of the program, these are all the main tools. So all of this is different tools in the program. Um, the top four are basically edit tools. So uh, the pointer arrow is if you need to edit, move, delete anything, you'll need to be in the pointer. Um, fence and lasso are basically the same thing, but fence will do a rectangle or a square whereas a lasso will let you do an odd shape if you needed to kind of go around something to select. Pan is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to just pan around on the screen. The next four icons are draw tools. Um, the top one is draw area. This is what we'll use to draw any area that we want to define. Um, draw, uh, draw area lines have dimension labels on them. And as mentioned, they're used for areas that we want to get square footages of. The icon right below it is draw interior, or we call it freeform as well. And that's more for interior walls, or let's say you wanted to draw a road or something just to kind of show where the road is compared to maybe a building. Um, this is what you would use because you don't have to draw a closed shape. You can just draw random lines anywhere you want, and it's more for visual purposes. Um, rather than anything else. And it does not have dimension labels on freeform walls. You can make them show up, but they aren't there by default. Um, right below that, insert vertex, that basically allows you to split an area in half. So let's say you drew a rectangle and someone came in and changed something and maybe now half of that rectangle is a different type of area. Well, rather than redrawing both pieces, you could draw a line across the middle of it and it'll cut it into two separate areas and then you can redefine the top or the bottom piece as what you need. The next icon is survey. Um, survey, as mentioned in the tab up top, that's used to draw legal descriptions. If you don't have survey activated, you won't have this icon. Um, but yeah, if, if you happen to not see this icon, it means that your survey tab is not activated, so go activate it and this icon will show up. Uh, the next three icons, these are library tools. So the top one here, define area. This is where we're going to come to identify our areas once we draw. And this list will vary depending on what you have. So if you have custom codes, they will look different than what I have here. So in my examples, I always mention, don't worry about the type of area I'm using more how I'm doing it, because um, your list could look different than what I have here. Uh, Below that is text, so if you want to add text to your sketch, this is where you'll come. It'll pop up a text library. You can drag and drop any of these labels in that you need. Um, you can also edit this list and add things that aren't there if needed. Below that is symbols. 
Um, this is where we can come get doors, north arrows, uh, any type of symbol that you use. I don't know that you all use very many symbols, but uh, this list is customizable as well to just show your most used symbols. So you could edit this favorite list and let's say you only use a north arrow and a couple of others. You can have only those three shown here if you want it. And then um, finally below that is the geo reference option. And what that does is it allows you to geo reference two points in a sketch. And that would help with um, if you did any kind of sketch verification or with GIS, you kind of know where that sketch goes and how it should be orientated by where those two points are. All right, and then so bottom left here, these are view tools as well. So um, uh, this first icon, this will center your sketch if you click it. Um, there's also shortcut keys on the keyboard. So if you notice when I hover over it, it pops up center and it has a C in parentheses. So C on the keyboard will do the same thing as clicking this button. So any keyboard users can just hit C. It'll do the same thing that this button does. Um, the button to the right will actually center and fit. So what this will do is it'll blow the sketch up as big as it can be to fit on your screen and, it, and it'll center it all at once um, or shrink it down if you're zoomed in and center it. Um, that's shift C on the keyboard for the shortcut key. Um, the zoom tool basically allows you to fence something and when you let go of the fence, it zooms in on whatever's in that rectangle or square. Um, it's really handy in mobile devices. Um, to the right of that, we have the grid on off, which I kind of explained up top. It's under the view tab as well. This will turn the grid on, turn the grid off. That's more of a user preference than anything. Um, to the right of this is snap on or off. Um, Typically, I say don't t turn snap off, leave it on always. It makes your life a lot easier. Things just kind of snap together and work well. But if you have a real detailed sketch, sometimes you might have things snapping that you don't want to snap. And if that happens, you could come down here and turn this off and that'll kind of stop it from happening. But usually you only need to deal with that if you have a super complicated sketch uh, and you're working in close quarters with other other areas. The filter allows you to filter what, what you see. So it, let's say you had a sketch with a bunch of text in it and you didn't want to show that text. Uh, you could check the box and it would hide all the text from the sketch. So you don't have to go and delete it all. You could just hide it and then print it or do what you want with it from there. Um, next, we have the zoom slider. So we're at a 44% zoom at a 1 to 14 scale. Um, the scale is not going to matter too much unless you're drawing a super big building. Um, usually you can get most of anything on a one to 10 scale, any normal size building. Now, if you're doing apartment complexes or huge commercial buildings, you might max that out and you're gonna have to change the scale. Um, but the program does a pretty good job at kind of rescaling it for you, or I wouldn't even say rescaling, zooming in or out for you to see everything. Uh, and if you wanted to print at a specific scale, you can, you can specify that when you print, print at this scale. So it, it's not really that important on screen what scale you're working with. It's more important if you wanted to print at a specific scale. Um, bottom right, we have our pages. So if you were working with a multi-page sketch, this is where you could tell whether or not you had more than one page. So we're on page one of one. So we have a one page sketch here. Uh, if we wanted to add a page, click the page right button. It would ask if we want to add a page. If you click yes, it'll, it'll add an additional page. Um, coming up to the top right, um, we have the t tabs. So we have the buttons for define area, text, symbols, uh, and survey. Well, on the right side, we actually have tabs. If you hover your mouse over any of these tabs, it'll fly out the same thing. Uh, and the reason for that is some people prefer to just come over to the text tab, pop it out, drag a label in, and it goes away automatically. So it's more of a preference of how you prefer to use it, but you do have the ability to just hover. It'll fly out. You can grab what you want, move away, and it'll close back. Um, the only tab over here that's not accessible from this left toolbar is the calculations tab, and this will show you a list of what you have drawn. Since we don't have anything drawn right now, it's blank, but we'll definitely come back and look at this once we get to drawing. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the interface and all the most commonly used features and, and tools in the program. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get started drawing. So in order to draw an area, we're gonna come to the draw area icon here on the left. 
uh, and E or F4 on your keyboard will take you here as well if it, there's any keyboard users out there. Um, and by the way, there is a list of all the shortcut keys I'm calling out under help and then online user guide. You can print out all the shortcut keys I'm calling out and keep it by your desk if you want to familiar, familiarize yourself with it. So there's really no need to kind of write down every key I'm saying because you can go print that out. Um, so to get started, we selected the draw area tool. Uh, you'll notice that the cursor changes to a crosshair. Uh, your cursor will give you a good indication of what tool you're in. If you're in edit, it's a, it's a pointer arrow. If you're in a draw mode, you're gonna have a crosshair. So that's a good indication what mode you're in. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and press enter on the keyboard and you'll notice that the cursor turns green. So when the cursor is green, the pen is down on the page, which means if you move your mouse, if you tap an arrow key, if you hit enter a distance or direction, it's gonna draw a line because the pen is down on the page. So for example, if I move my mouse, you'll notice that I can kind of pull it out to whatever distance. Now this is the most inefficient way to draw, but some people prefer to do it this way. Um, so yeah, you can just drag out and then click and it'll anchor that line. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tap delete here. Um, the, the most efficient way to draw is to enter the distance in the, and then tap the direction arrow. So if we wanted to draw a 20 foot wall to the right, I'm gonna type in 20 on the keyboard. And if you keep an eye down here, you'll see what I'm typing in. We see the 20 in red right there. So type in 20, tap my right arrow on my keyboard. It drew a 20 foot line to the right. And then I'll go ahead and tap enter and it'll place that line on the page. So basically we're gonna repeat those steps to draw the remainder of whatever shape you wanna draw. Now with this way of drawing, you don't have to necessarily draw a complete shape. You can pick up your pen at any time and move somewhere. So for example, let's say I got to this point and I was like, uh, you know what, I wish I would have started drawing the opposite direction. Well, you can simply tap enter a second time with no line drawn, and then you can move your cursor over to this side, hit enter, and now we can start drawing the opposite direction. Um, so you're not locked in to draw in one way once you start. You can always pick your pen up move it somewhere else and continue on in the opposite direction or anywhere else on the page actually, uh, if needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap in distance, direction, enter. So I'm gonna do 10 right, enter, 35 down, enter. And let's say at this point, I wanna center my sketch. I'm gonna tap C on the keyboard and it'll center, okay? I'm gonna go 20 left, enter, six, up all right i actually made a mistake i wanted to go eight up instead of six up so there's a couple of ways you can fix it um each time you tap a direction arrow it'll move one foot so i could tap my up arrow two more times and it would get me to eight foot or eight on the keyboard and hit enter and it'll change that wall to eight so either way is is appropriate Whichever is more convenient. I prefer, I prefer just to type the number and hit enter versus using my arrow key a couple of times. That way I know it's exactly what it should be. But as long as the line is not anchored, whatever number you type and hit enter, once you have a line drawn out, it'll change that line to that distance. So I'll go ahead and tap enter. We'll go six left. We'll come six back down and I'll go one to the left. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do shift C now to show you center and fit. Okay, so what that did is it blew the sketch up as big as it could be to fit on my page and centered it. Um, so once I kind of got the basic shape down and I knew, okay, this is the height of my building, the max height, I'm going to go ahead and center and fit it. So now I'm working with it as big as I possibly can without anything going off the screen now. So the next wall we have here is actually a bay window. Typically, bay windows are done using rise and run, at least in the experience of that I have. Um, usually, they're either like two by two or three by three. Um, so the way to do a bay window using rise and run, you'll type in two and press the down arrow. OK, but then without hitting enter, we're going to tap two and tap the left arrow. OK, so you'll notice that the, the, the wall is now angled. We can see the length of the wall is 2.8. We see it's a 45 degree angle by the in red. 
and we see two kind of to the right of the eight foot wall it's two feet down and there's another two it might be off the screen right now but it shows you on screen the rise and run of it and i'll do another angle where you can see it more clearly so once you've confirmed okay that's that's the correct angle go ahead and tap enter and it anchors that angled wall in your sketch so from this point we'll go six feet left enter and now we need to recreate that bay window so we could do two up and then two left to get the bay window, this, the mirrored angle, but we do have a shortcut to that. So I'm gonna delete it. And the shortcut to a bay window, once you draw the first angle and you draw the middle wall, if you press B on your keyboard for bay window, it'll mirror the first angle automatically for you. So you don't even have to press enter. You just hit B, it'll automatically draw it. Um, from that point, I'll go one, one foot to the left and I'll come 15 feet up. All right, so I showed how to draw I showed how to draw a um, a smaller angle, like a bay window. But let's say we have a larger wing like angle. Maybe it's, you know, let's say it's twenty feet long. Well, it's not very easy to get the rise and run on a on a bigger wall like that. So if you have something like a miter gauge, you can go and get the angle of the wall. And then we have a way to draw that fairly easily in Apex. So if you're able to get to the angle of the wall, um, we can enter the distance of the wall, the direction, and then what the degree is. So for example, if we had a 20 foot wall going to the left and it was say 53 degrees, on my keyboard, I would type in 20 for, for the distance of the wall, and then it's going to the left. So I'm gonna tap L for left. And if you look down in the input panel, you're going to see 20 foot line at 90 degrees left. It's to the left of the page one of one. Well, we don't want 90 degrees. We want 53. So I'm going to go ahead now and type in 53. And it's going to change that 90 to a 53. So now if I hit enter on the keyboard, there's my 20 foot wall going to the left. I can verify it's 53 degrees right there on the screen. And it actually figured the rise and run out for me. So it's 16 to the left, it's 12 feet up to get that angle. Um, so once I've confirmed that is the correct wall, go ahead and tap enter and it'll anchor that. Now from this point, we wanna come 90 degrees off of this angled wall uh, at uh, 15 feet. So I'm gonna type 15 on my keyboard. I'm gonna tap R for right, and then I'm gonna tap enter. All right, and that kept me 90 degrees off of that angled wall. We have a 15 foot wall. I have my rise and run showing. Um, once I confirm that is correct, I'll go ahead and tap enter. And I actually had my witness lines turned off by mistake, but I'm gonna turn them back on. So if you notice right here, uh, and these are on by default, I didn't even realize they were off till I was about to show it. Um, but you'll notice here, we have three different numbers showing. Uh, 14 feet, that's how far it is straight up to align with where you started. Uh, then we have 8.9, that's how far it is to go to the right to square it up. And then the 16.6, .6, that's how far it is if you just went straight to where you started. So any of those letters in parentheses below those numbers, if you tap that letter, it will draw that line in that direction. So in this case, we want to use that 8.9 to the right. So I'm just going to tap X on my keyboard and it drew that line for me and squared everything up. Now the last wall, it's 14 feet straight up. Um, so F9 on the keyboard will turn them on and off and they, they are on by default. If you don't see them, press F9. And so yeah, on this last wall, I'm gonna go ahead and tap A to auto close. And it drew a line from where I'm at to where I started, closing the shape. So next I'm going to I'm going to add a patio area on over here. Okay? With this style of drawing, remember we don't have to trace over common walls. We're just going to kind of draw like we would on paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh hit J on my keyboard and what J does is it jumps the cursor to whatever corner you're closest to. Um Ooh. you you can also just use the mouse and it'll kind of snap to the corner, but if you want just put it close and hit J and it'll jump right to that corner. And now we know we're perfectly aligned and we'll go ahead and tap enter. Okay, so from this point, I'm gonna go six feet to the right and press enter. 
and this patio has a curved corner. And so let's say I, I measured the curve. I know that the curve is the chord of the curve is at is at a 45 degree angle and the rise and run is 10 feet by 10 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and tap 10 on 10 on the keyboard and hit the down arrow. And then I'm going to tap 10 and hit the right arrow. OK, and that's setting up my chord for my curve. So where the curve starts is at the end of that six foot wall, where the curve ends is where my green cursor is. So now I need to curve that line. So on my keyboard, I'm gonna press the minus key. And this only works if you have a 10 key on the right side of your keyboard. Otherwise you can roll the wheel on the top of your mouse to curve it, but I'm more of a keyboard user, so I prefer using my keyboard. Um, so I'm just gonna tap minus, and each time I use minus on my 10 key, it's gonna curve 15 degrees. And it's telling me in green, I have 45 right now, now it's a 60 degree so typically i see curved corners are 90 so i'm going to tap that minus key until i get to a 90 degree curve and then i'll go ahead and hit enter and the program figured out the arc length by what we drew so 15.7 is the length from one end to the other so from this point i just need to draw a line down to connect it to the bottom so i'm going to just hold control and tap my down arrow three times. Control direction arrow is an alignment tool. And what it did is it, the first time I did control down arrow, it aligned me with that 8.9 foot wall on the left side. The second time it aligned me with the 10 foot wall. Third time it jumped me down to the corner where I want it to be. So from here, I'm gonna press enter, okay? And we're done. We don't need to trace all the way back to where we started. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter a second time on my keyboard. The okay. cursor is going to turn gray. And now I can move it and continue drawing something else. So the next piece we're going to add on, we're going to go ahead and add a garage. So I'm going to come down to this corner, jump to it, press enter, and we'll go 24 to the right, 20 up. And then I'll just press X on the keyboard to draw the 24 left. And then I don't need to trace back down that wall. So I'm just going to hit enter a second time and it's going to turn my cursor gray. So we have a first floor, a garage and a patio drawn right now. Um, but let's say this is a two story building and I don't know how much y'all do, you know, a second story. I don't know if you use factor or if you actually go in and measure a second story. Um, but if you do go and measure it, um, so what you can do is let's say that the second story pretty much follows the footprint of the first floor and it goes over the garage, but maybe there's like a bigger open area right here that it doesn't go over. Um, and let's say we determine, okay, the second floor actually starts about right here on this corner. Okay. And then it maybe comes, it comes, let's say it comes down, we'll go 12 feet down. All right, and then it comes six feet left, and then it comes in and aligns with where that 20 foot angle started, and then it comes over here. So basically what we did is we carved out where the second floor ends on top of the first floor. So we drew one, two, three, four lines to carve out. So let's say all of this is second floor, but it also over this garage is second floor. So we don't need to retrace all of this back to where we are we just we're just drawing what's not there and and this will make more sense when i start to I identify what everything is okay so now that we have everything drawn we're going to go ahead and start identifying what what each piece we drew is so in order to do that we're going to come to the define area icon okay and that's going to pop up a panel on the right with a list of all your available area types um, so for this example, this piece right here is our first floor. So I'm going to go ahead and click inside of it. Okay. And it highlighted it in blue, but this is also the first floor. So I'm going to click here to add it to it. So right now, everything in blue is what I want to use as my first floor. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here, select first floor, click apply. All right. So now everything in blue you see now is is now defined as my first floor and I have a square footage for it. 
All right, so next we'll go ahead and we'll select the, the patio. We'll come down in our list and we'll find patio. I'll go ahead and use covered patio and I'll apply it. All right, now our patio is defined and notice it took on the line styles of this selected area type and you can kind of see a, a preview of it here. So your code table determines what your areas are gonna look like. So as long as everyone has the same code table, everyone's sketches will look the same depending on you know each area all right and next we'll go ahead and select the garage and actually for the garage i'm going to show you another way to find if you have just a single area it's not multiple pieces like the first floor was you can actually drag and drop so i'm going to just drag the word garage and drop it in and it defined that as garage now for our our second floor it's going to be this piece but it's also going to be this piece Okay, so I'm gonna select this part, I'm gonna select above the garage, I'm gonna go ahead and select second floor, and I'm gonna click apply. All right, so now our second floor is defined as well. So if we wanna confirm all of our areas are defined, we can go to the view tab, go to view calcs, and now we have a list of everything drawn. All the square footages of everything, uh, we can get a little more detail on you know, perimeters and factors and things like that as well. Um, so once you have everything drawn, you may want to go ahead and pull the second floor off the top of the first. So what I'm going to do is go to the pointer arrow. I'm going to just click and drag. If you click and drag anywhere in the blank space around your sketch, you could actually move the sketch around on the page anywhere you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it over here, select the second floor, and I'm going to drag it off. So we drew that whole second floor and all we had to do was draw four lines and we, we used the existing lines. Um, you'll notice that the, um, you'll notice that the, there's no dimension labels on any of these walls. And the reason for that is that when we traced over this second floor, it didn't want to duplicate the labels that were already there. So it didn't put any labels here. So to get all the labels back, we can select the area hold down the control key and press F10. And what this is gonna do is cycle the dimensions. So now they're all on the inside, they're all off. Now they're all on the outside. So you can quickly bring all your dimension labels back if you happen to draw on top and move it by selecting the area, holding control and pressing F10. Another thing you might notice, we have, you know, this wall has two different dimensions. We have 20 feet and then we have 24. Well, that's because that's where these points met up. So on your second floor, you might want to just have one dimension for this wall. Well, what you can do is select the point separating the two walls and delete it. And it'll combine that dimension into one label. So you can easily combine dimensions that are on the same plane or on the same wall by deleting the point between the two walls and it'll combine that label. Now, let's say we did this and we realized, uh oh, that bay window actually is not on the second floor. It's only on the first floor. OK, so we can easily make edits as well to fix that. So in that case, what we can do is select one of the points of the bay window, delete it. Select this point, delete it. Select this point, delete it. Select that point, delete it. So we just made that into a straight wall pretty quickly. Now there's, there's another way to do it. I'm going to undo. And I'm just going to show you another way it can happen. Now you're still going to have to delete the points, but what you could do is select the six foot wall, hold control, press your up arrow, and that's going to align it, make it straight, hit enter. Then you can come in, click one point, hold control and click so click all the points at one time and delete them all at once. And now you have your one wall again. Um, let's say we also figured out after we drew this that actually the second floor didn't go completely over the garage, it only went halfway. So we're 12 feet too long here. This should be 12 feet, not 24 feet. Well, in order to fix that, we could just select this 20 foot wall, type in 12, Tap our left arrow, tap enter. Square footage updated. We're now at 12 feet here. 
and we just quickly edited that area without having to reopen anything or delete anything. We just adjusted that wall. Um, I'm gonna show y'all an easy way to create curves as well. So I showed you how to do a curve while you're drawing, but you can also come in and curve walls after you're done. So let's say for example, there's a, there's a curve in this wall here, okay? And we drew it as a straight wall. Well, you can come in after the fact, select the wall, and then if you click and drag from the center, you can pull it out to whatever curve you want. It's showing you here the, the arc angle, all of that. We have arc height here, degree of curve, which isn't used very often because it's kind of hard to measure the degree of a curve. Uh, the chord is shown here, and then the arc length is here. Um, so you can come and click any wall and drag it from the center and curve it after you've, after you've drawn everything and you've closed it. And, you can come back later and curve walls too, which some people prefer to do. So let's say this curve, we determined the arc length should be 20 feet and we have 18.1 now. So if you select the curve, if you look up here, we have arc length, the rise, run, angle, cord, uh, arc height, all the information here. So if we know the arc length should be 20, we can come here, type in 20. And when I hit enter, that 18 will change. Now it's 20 feet all the way around. Any line you select, the properties of that line will show up up here. Um, so if it's a straight line, it'll give you pretty much, you'll have the length and, and the information. If you select an angled wall, it'll give you the rise, the run, the angle, interior angle and the length. Um, so this is handy if you're just looking at an existing sketch and you're like, huh, what is that angle? click on the wall and it'll tell you on screen, but it'll also give you more details up here about it. And, and one other thing, so while you're drawing, speaking of curves, so I showed you how to, you know, enter the chord, use the minus, we're going 15 degrees. If you wanna go in, let's say five degrees, hold down shift and use minus. Now we're doing five degrees each time I hit minus. If you wanna uh, get even more precise, hold shift and control, it'll go one degree. And really you're probably gonna be looking at the arc height versus the angle, because usually you'll do the chord and you'll do the arc height if it's a straight curve. So you'd measure how tall it is. So let's say we had a five feet, five foot tall arc height, we're at 4.7. So I'm gonna hold shift control minus until I get it to five. And then I'll hit enter. Um, so another thing that's commonly asked, and I don't know, how much you have this out where you're you're working but basements you know a lot of times a basement will be the same shape as the first floor or it might cover multiple pieces of an area um, which i kind of showed how to define multiple pieces as one so like if the basement was under the garage and the first floor you could select the first floor you could select the garage you could define all of that as basement um, but a lot of times it's like just the first floor or just you know, a certain area that it covers. Um, so we do have an easy way to clone an area. So let's say for this example, the basement is the exact same shape as the first floor. Um, so what, what you would do if you wanted to clone an area would be select the area. And then while that area is highlighted, if you right click, you have an option to clone area. So I'm gonna click clone area. It's gonna bring up a little panel where I can pick what my new area is, and I'm gonna go ahead and call it the basement. If you wanted to, you could even type more information here if you wanted for the area name. Uh, and then when I hit apply, I have a basement now sitting right on top, so I'm just gonna drag it off to the side and hold shift and hit C, and it'll bring it all into view. So I quickly just clone that first floor as a basement, and even if, you know, like I said, maybe the basement doesn't have the, it goes straight across here. Go ahead and clone it and just, you know, align that piece and then delete this wall and get your one dimension, you know? So a lot of times it might be faster to just clone something and then adjust it versus trying to figure it out otherwise. Um, so there are easy ways to clone areas if needed. And let's say that this basement, maybe it has like an area in the center that maybe you don't want to include in the square footage of the basement. Or even better yet, let's say this first or the second floor has an open area right in the middle that we don't want to include in the square footage. 
So for that, we have something we call auto subtract. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this area so we can see it a little bit. Um, so the way auto subtract works is we can draw any area and we could subtract the square footage of that area from any other area that's bigger than it. And it's typically used in open areas on second floors mainly. Um, and so, and I'm going to use a quick shape to draw this. So we have right below the draw area button, there's a little arrow pointing to the right. If you click that arrow, it allows you to quickly draw a square or a rectangle, a circle, or a multi-sided shape, like an octagon um, or anything, like gazebo type stuff usually is used for this. Um, but for this example, I'm gonna use the, this tool. And so I'm just gonna click, and then I'm gonna drag my mouse and click again. Okay, when I do that, I actually get the opportunity to enter it. So let's say it's 10 feet and it's by four. All right, so we have our 10 by four. Let's say this is where the stairs come up. We don't wanna include this piece. So the first step is go ahead and draw it. Once it's drawn, we're going to come in and we're going to define that. And I like to define it as other, let's see if we have open in here. Yep, open. And I'm going to click apply. All right, so it's 40 square feet. This is an open area. So now that we have it drawn, if you come to the pointer arrow and you select that open area, you'll get an option up here to auto subtract. So I'm gonna go ahead and click auto subtract and it's gonna pop up a panel where I can pick what do I wanna subtract this from. In this case, I wanna subtract from the second floor. So I'm gonna pick second floor. And when I okay it, keep an eye on that 1319, it's gonna drop to 1279. So we subtracted the open stairs from the second floor and the calculation adjusted. Um, once you subtract an area from another, if you move the larger area, the area subtracted will move with it. So that's a good identification. These two areas are connected now because of that. Now you can move the small area without the big area moving, but if you move the big area, the small one's gonna go with it. Uh, another way you can confirm whether or not the area is subtracted, if you go to your calculation panel and we go to the second floor, it shows subtracted 40. If we drop that down, it tells you what area is being subtracted from it. So that, that would be how you um, would do an open area, whether it be, this could be used for a wraparound porch too. If you have a porch going completely around a house, then you're gonna have to subtract the house from the porch to get the square footage of that porch. Um, that's another typically used way or typically used um, thing for auto subtract. All right, and I'm going to go a little bit more in the quick shapes. I'm just going to add a page. And I'm going to show you the uh, circle and the multi-sided shape tool. So circle tool, if you click it, you can click, drag, click again, and it will give you the option either enter the radius or the diameter, either one. So for this example, let's say it's a 15 radius. I'll click OK. All right, so ju it just adjusted that. Now it's a 15 radius. And then from there, you can go ahead and define that as whatever area type you want. The, the multi-sided shape is even more useful, in my opinion. Um, in this one, click and drag. Click again. OK, now you can, you can indicate how many sides does it have and how long is each wall. So if let's say it had 10 sides and each wall was seven feet, when I click okay, it adjusted it. Now every wall is seven feet and we have 10 sides. And then from that point, we could go ahead and define it as whatever we want and it will calculate that shape. Uh, another way I've seen this used is, is they, will, they will go ahead and do this. And then what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll select the wall. Let me zoom in on this. They'll select a wall and delete it. And then they'll come back into draw mode. They'll delete back, let's say to here. And then maybe this is the corner of a house and they were having trouble drawing that. So they went ahead and drew it as a whole shape and then came back and reopened it so that they could get that shape on the corner without struggling. And now every wall here is seven feet.
you know, so so there's little tips like that that make things a lot easier to do once you kind of start using it and figuring it out. 